Deputy Executive Director and Chief Operations Officer here at CASBO. And I want to thank you for joining us uh, for the next hour in this conversation around our purchasing considerations as we look to reopen our California schools. Um, it seems a long time ago uh, that we were involved in conversations with the governor's office each night, the superintendent of public instruction, CDE, and we would, we would sit and, and kind of listen to the struggle around how we're going to reopen schools and uh, really decided that the most effective way to help inform our politicians was to have all of this great insight coming in from the practitioners and the leaders in these respective areas in school business. Um, and with that information, uh, after you know seven, eight webinars, just listening, which is our purpose today, we were able to pivot and better inform those decision makers as to the realities um, and the consequences of some of those decisions. So we, we've just continued uh, these listening sessions. Typically the format is that we're gonna be gathering a lot of information. In some cases, um, there are questions that aren't able to be answered on these. We go back and get in more information from you or for you. And we're really complementing these sort of listening sessions with our CASBO uh, members with uh, summer speakers, right? The summer speaker series where we're actually then also pivoting and informing back to this audience the findings that we have as things continue to evolve. So again, our appreciation for joining and certainly for those that are spending the time to share their expertise. We wanna make sure that you know we are recording the session any um, questions you can enter there in the Q and A. Uh, we will be answering those. Sarah's gonna moderate that uh, discussion uh, with our panel of experts. Uh, we are again recording it. We'll have that turned back around to you uh, here in the next day or so when that file is uh, condensed for us. So with that introduction, I wanna turn it over to uh, Dr. Molly McGee Hewitt, our executive director, and she'll be doing the introductions for today. Right. Thank you. And I just want to also give my thanks to you for joining us today. I know that you have a lot of calls on your time right now. And so taking the time for this really is an indication of your desire to stay current and to know what's going on. I just would also like to remind you that since the, C the CASBO annual conference was canceled and we've canceled some of our workshops at the section and state level, this program does count for continuing education credit. So as self-certifiers, you can use it as an hour of continuing education credit. Also, in addition to our summer series, we have our podcasts. If you haven't already logged in and taken an opportunity to listen, please do that. We would like to keep you informed and keep you in the, in the know with what's going on. If I were to just use one word to describe where we are in education today, I would say we're we're in limbo. We are not sure. We're hoping schools are going to start in the fall, but you know, right now there is an uptake in the number of COVID cases. Is that going to push us back? We don't know for sure. Will we be able to do distance learning only, or will it be a hybrid of distance and on-site learning in the fall? I know there are some districts that are planning to open school uh, sort of the way that normal way that we did a couple of counties and school districts. But right now we're all in limbo because there are so many pieces to our education puzzle that are out of whack. It's sort of like trying to put together a puzzle without seeing the picture and knowing what that puzzle is. So one of the groups at CASBO that's one of our unsung heroes has to do with purchasing because we couldn't have schools without having all the materials and the things that we need to run the schools. And so our purchasing PC has been great at CASBO. We have some folks today that are gonna share information with you, but purchasing really has such a responsibility, not just with the PPE and how we're going to handle those kinds of issues, but with all of the changes that are going on out there. So today's program is about reopening and some purchasing considerations for you to look at. And we're really grateful to have this panel with us to share information with you. So uh, Tasha and Sarah are online with us and they will be working on the webinar at the at Tasha at the close and Sarah helping with the questions. 
But our purchasing experts today, we have Leanna Roddeberry, who's the Director of Purchasing at Clovis Unified. She's also our CASBO EAF, which is the Education Advocacy Foundation Chair. And that means that she is very involved in the CASBO legislative process, as well as she is one of our past presidents. We have Genevieve Gilmore, who's the Director of Purchasing at the Ventura Unified School District. And we have Sharon Clay, who's the Director of Purchasing and Logistics at Cajon Valley Union School District. Three very smart women who have good information to share with us. So I will turn it over to you and thank you ladies for being with us. Wonderful. Well, um, on the next slide, I know um, some of you or most of you may be part of the FICMAT listserv. So hello in person from the that and I love participating and I love all the questions and feedback on that and how much we share CASBO information on that as well. Um, I know a lot of us have recently heard after we made major purchases for our district that the state would be supplying through our county offices products to our district. Um, there is an unknown quality, unknown delivery date at this time. Some of us have heard from our county offices, some have not. But this was just an anticipated list and quantity of items that should be distributed to our districts based on information from the state. But again, we do not know those dates at this time. I know many of us, um, like I said, have already pre-planned and purchased some of these items. So what we're gonna discuss today is some of that pre-planning and some of the information sharing and how each of our districts is so unique and there is not a one size fits all based on our parent population, our student population, as well as how comfortable our certificated and classified staff are to come back to a full day of full on classroom setting. So um, we're gonna start with Sharon and some of the ideas and things that they have worked on at her district regarding um, like school kits, some hand washing stations, water supplies, um, et cetera. Thank you. So yeah, I would say it's definitely been a challenge with all these ever-changing guidelines and precautions and requirements coming out from the multiple agencies and seems like every district is just trying to balance taking the necessary precautions to provide a safe space um, while also being practical and trying to be budget conscious at the same time. Um, in our district, we've been offering emergency childcare for essential workers throughout most of the school closure. So we've been really fortunate to be able to practice um, some of these new procedures before students return in large numbers in the fall. Some of the purchases that we've made already are for hand sanitizer. We originally ordered gallon sized jugs of sanitizer that included pump tops that we've been using with staff and students. And we were able to get those from Southwest School and Office Supply. Uh, we've also ordered wall mounted dispensers for all of the classrooms that we're gonna have installed before school starts in the fall and a small number of freestanding hand sanitizer dispensers that they can put throughout the campus as, or move them around as, as needed to the entrances or the play areas. Um, some of the considerations when we were purchasing the dispensers was we wanted a non-proprietary um, option that we could refill with any brand because like we all know the supply is ever changing and we wanted the ability to be able to shop around for the best price and and lead time so we ordered the um, foam dispensers with enough foam to fill them up for the initial time but we were also able to order an adapter piece that allows the dispensers to be converted from foam to gel so that way, no matter what type of gallons the state ends up sending us, since we're not really quite sure what they're sending us, that we'll be able to use those gallons to refill our dispensers and we won't be stuck with just a certain type. 
Um, and we were able to get those from, from main text, but we did check around a, a lot of different sources. Um, and right now we're in the process of determining hand sanitizer options for the buses because we don't want anything mounted on the buses that will be an issue for CHP. So we're working with our transportation director to see what might be a potential option there. Um, we also purchased infrared no contact thermometers for all of our sites and one of our district nurses was able to put together an instruction sheet to um, let staff have simple instructions to follow when they're taking the temperatures. We have our in-house print shop making COVID signage for all of our sites. So thankfully we haven't had to source that out, but they're able to print out all the various signs and floor stickers and everything that the sites will be needing um, to prepare for the students to return. Um, we purchased cloth reusable masks for all of our staff so that are printed with a district logo. So looks like this. <laughs> Um, we're encouraging all of our staff to wear cloth reusable masks to try to reduce the number of disposable masks that, that we're providing, but we're, we'll also be providing disposable masks for anybody that forgets their masks or happens to show up without one. Um, and then as far as the students, I had done a lot of research on student mask options, but at this point we're waiting, we're holding off ordering anything until we see what we receive from the state. So hopefully we will get that in and not have to actually make that purchase for the students. And then on disinfectant cleaners, um, at the beginning of this, we were able to obtain a, a good amount of Clorox wipes, but we haven't been able to procure any for quite some time. Those seem to be impossible to get. So we have been um, stocking our regular disinfectant cleaners that we typically use with our custodial staff and um, we're using Citricide and TurboKill right now. We have our maintenance and operations staff diluting the chemicals to the proper ratio in the spray bottles to make sure that everything is properly diluted and the proper precautions taken and, and labeling them before those are distributed to sites to use with rags as needed. All of our staff um, completes the required pesticide training annually, along with their other mandated training through an online video so that they're able to use um, disinfected if needed. I don't think we've determined who will actually, you know, be doing all of that, but that's what we're going to have available right now. And then um, one of the, the big topics around here has been school supplies, you know, for our summer emergency child care program. We've been providing individual school supplies for each student so that they're not all sharing common supplies like they normally would. So they're not touching each other's scissors and crayons and markers and things like that. And so we had provided each student a plastic shoebox size container with their own supplies inside there that's labeled with their names. And for our, our summer programs coming up, what we're doing is we ordered pre-filled backpacks. We made sure that the backpacks will also be able to fit their student Chromebooks and they came pre-filled with all of the school supplies um, and we ordered them from school kids. It's called Kits for Kids and they were able to deliver all of those supplies within two weeks. So we found that to be a good economical option for getting the school supplies pre-packaged and saving our staff time of having to assemble everything. But we're still determining what we're going to do for the school supplies for the fall. If we're going to try to get them all in and assemble them ourselves or order pre-assembled kits. Um, and then on hand washing stations, most of our classrooms do have sinks with soap and water, but we're currently doing inventory to determine how many rooms at each campus don't have sinks so that we can provide hand washing stations for those areas and potentially in some outdoor play areas as well. Um, I evaluated the cost of purchasing versus renting the hand washing stations 
And since this looks to be probably a long-term need, we've just determined that for us, it's probably more economical to, to purchase the stations. And since we don't have water supply in those areas, we'll be um, purchasing the style that has a fresh water tank as well as a wastewater tank that will need to be filled and emptied daily. So we're trying to keep the number of hand washing stations really to a minimum because of the maintenance work involved. But we want to make sure that the students do have the ability to wash their hands, especially um, before they eat. And then um, lastly, for drinking water, since drinking fountains can't be used and schools are being encouraged to provide an alternate option for drinking water, we're encouraging students to bring their own water from home. And then for those that don't have water, we're planning to provide one-time use paper cups that can be filled by someone that's going to be in charge of filling the cups. I'm not quite sure who that will be yet. Um, and to eliminate the, the touching of the dispenser. And um, so we'll have some like sparklets, bottled water filling stations available in the rooms that don't have water. Oh, and one more thing, I'm currently researching desk partition options. Since we have collaborative furniture in our district, instead of single student desks, we're looking at options to be able to place partitions bet uh, between students that may need to sit across from each other and um, trying to find an economical solution for that. So we're working with some of our local um, box manufacturers and and different distributors and furniture suppliers to see what the the best option is for the student partitions and i think that's basically everything that that we have have done thus far great thanks sharon i know it's it's kind of ironic that for the last few years the big topic for all of us in purchasing has been collaborative furniture and we've all made such an investment in that. And now we're back to scattering kids and trying to do away with that, which then interferes with the new learning patterns as well. One thing exactly. I'd like to discuss, um, we're looking at the same thing. It's sad that it takes a pandemic to think outside the box sometimes. And some of what we're finding is once we get past the shell shock of all the additional custodial and maintenance staff time that's gonna be involved with all the extra cleaning and disinfecting and keeping people comfortable on campus is we've come up with a solution that's gonna allow us in the long run to have fewer different types of chemicals and cleaning supplies on hand with some of like what you just discussed, if you dilute it to different ratios, there's product that could be a disinfectant, a grease cutter, a window cleaner, et cetera. And then we there's fewer MSDS sheets and fewer emergency issues when people come into contact with that product. So we too are looking at the spray bottle solution, good old microfiber towels. We're actually investing in some washing machines to where our own night crew will be washing those towels because we had some staff concerned if we're sending out uniforms or towels, how do we they know they're getting their product back? How do they know it's being handled properly or washed in the correct temperature of water so they're not comfortable with that from an outside provider? And we're looking at, um, I wish I had invested in Clorox wipes because I could be retired now. But what we're looking at is that same solution. There are um, companies that sell just buckets of dry wipes. They come up to as many as 500 in a bucket. And the same solution that we would be utilizing to disinfect, we could use to pour in those buckets and create our own disinfecting wipes. And one of the benefits we see of that too is a 500 sheet bucket won't fit in a purse or a backpack. So it'll be more likely to stay in the room or in the area of the campus where we need it because 
unfortunately, I think we had some desperate people, desperate times where some items weren't always where we thought they would be in storage areas over the last several months. So we worked with that. The other thing we're working on is how do we not have hoarders in the product that's coming in? It's not just about the money, it's about the limited supply that we're bringing in and to make sure that everybody has some product as they need it. So what we've done is we have a district warehouse, we have a financial system that allows us to keep inventory of a warehouse. So we created a separate warehouse for just our PPE items where sites would enter a requisition and it would go through a workflow process to a gentleman in our facilities division who will review that order before it's um, released to our warehouse to fill to ensure that people aren't over ordering. For example, when this first started, we have gloves in our warehouse, which we all know those are a precious commodity, the nitro gloves. And we had an elementary school that wanted 50 boxes of all four size boxes of gloves in our warehouse. They did not need 200 boxes of gloves when we were anticipating kids to come back. So how do we stop that? And that was just, we wanna make sure everyone has it available. So that warehouse is gonna allow us to just review a need and share the wealth to everybody as our limited resources are coming in. Genevieve, what type of items um, have you been working on as far as risk management and signage and items such as that? Well, I think um, for the most part, we've been uh, mirroring everything that Sharon spoke about um, in terms of, you know, ordering uh, the cloth masks for uh, staff and, um, you know, uh, signage as well. Um, we did look and see about outsourcing some signage, but we found that um, we were better off doing um, the signage in-house. We're very fortunate to have a graphics department um, that could help us out with that. And um, basically with working with risk management, we have, um, we are very fortunate to have um, uh, Eric Reynolds, who's our uh, director of risk management. And he's, he's um, really good about um, communicating with all the, uh, staff and and uh, making sure that we're compliant with all of the uh, COVID regulations and everything. Um, but it's about us, you know, coming together, um, facilities and maintenance, risk management, um, ed services, and really working on communication to make sure that, um, you know, we're not stepping on each other's toes, but we're working in conjunction together uh, get everything that we need and making sure that we're getting the correct pro products and the correct quantities of uh, what we need. And so part of that was, um, you know, putting together uh, study sessions and making sure that we're all uh, collaborating together um, and, and um, you know, keeping up with the constant uh, changes, you know, uh, when it comes to the MSDS sheets for, you know, sanitizer or cleaning products. Uh, making sure that um, uh, what we're ordering is going to be able to be used on, you know, the copier machines and the bus seats, um, as well as hard surfaces and, and everything else. So um, really getting our uh, custodial supervisor in on the conversations as well, uh, making sure everyone has the uh, appropriate training. Um, just uh, the the collaborative um, aspect of it is just really critical, really important for for everyone involved. So I think um, uh, that was real important to get um, early on, making sure everyone was communicating and um, you know we're ordering what we need to be ordering. And also um, from my perspective, letting everyone know that you know timelines are critical um, when we need to get those orders in. Uh, earlier than later. So, you know, I, it's it's hard to make a decision sometimes, but a decision has to be made in order to, for us to uh, um, get the items in on time that we're ordering. 
Yeah, I know um, back order is a term we're all too familiar with right now. Yes. And um, I've also been uh, tasked with looking into outdoor furniture. Um, that's a consideration right now because if we are going to be uh, coming back on site, um, there yeah. certainly is going to be some overflow in, in certain areas and we're looking into how do we accommodate um, that and keep social distancing and keep our students comfortable. So that's a, that was one, one thing that, um, and the, the whole list that I didn't hear about. <laughs> Well, that desk is now flexible. It's indoor and outdoor for me. <laughs> <laughs> so Molly had a question for you guys in terms of, are you providing guidance to your teachers and staff regarding what they might be able to bring in themselves to their classrooms, to their work sites? That's a really good question. I think um, what we're trying to do is make sure that we have um, everything in stock in the warehouse so that when they come back, we can order um, or they can order straight directly from our warehouse and have the appropriate items um, uh, to accommodate their needs in the classroom. Um, but that's certainly something to consider, you know, if if they are to, you know, because we can't we certainly can't stop them from uh, bringing stuff in. And so if they have a, uh, some extra guidance in terms of, you know, we don't want anything higher than it, 70% alcohol content or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, we can certainly share that information with them um, to, in hopes that they would follow these guidelines. We, we will be doing that as well. What we did is where we had some summer programs, they had a box of summer PPE startup, and we had given them a list of those items the week before those programs started. We anticipate doing the same for back to school and telling them what we believe will be a two month supply for them to start. It'll be everything from hand sanitizer to additional masks for students to cleaning expectations for desk, hard surface, and laptops. And we're looking at how we can possibly do a one-on-one -on -one where a student always has the same laptop. I know that isn't always practical, especially if it's left at home. And what we have asked is we, if they could please limit the amount of products being in because we anticipate students bringing in more product than they've ever brought in before, as far as sanitizers, alcohol spray, maybe mom's made an alcohol water spray that interacts with the classroom, some of the wipes. We really need to control that. One thing that with our special ed students, all of this just adds to the indoor air quality, which would really impact some of our medically fragile students who are mainstreamed. So it's a little difficult with those options, but we're trying to communicate that we have their best, their safety and their best classroom environment possible and that we are planning ahead and thinking of adults as much as we're thinking of students and reminding adults that our decisions have to be student-based first, staff-based second, because our parents need to be comfortable with kids at school. But we also have to remember kind of the unsung heroes in all of this are gonna be our custodial teams. They're gonna be our first responders with all of the issues, the additional work that's going in and expectations of additional um, restroom cleaning, wiping of door handles, wiping of desktops, et cetera, that they're gonna be our superheroes of everyone's comfort level. But we need to work with them too. One of the things I, my purchasing team, nitro gloves that our custodial team is gonna need and what they anticipating is probably six to eight times the amount we have purchased in the past. So not only does that become a budget issue, but more significantly, it becomes a lack of supply issue. So how do we work with them of possibly transitioning to a vinyl glove? or something else. So those are the things that we're looking at with our teams, but we're trying to address 
both our classified, our certificated, and our students in all of those items and what we're communicating because everybody's safety and comfort level is the utmost that we're looking at right now. We yeah, had got. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, we've done similar to what Leanne mentioned is providing lists. We, you know, we try to stay in constant communication with the schools and communicate to them in advance what supplies we're planning to provide, when we're planning to provide them, and the quantity so that they know what we have to offer. And um, they're never afraid to ask if they think we're yeah. missing anything on our list. So. <laughs> so that we can answer questions in advance and we are allowing our staff to wear their own masks at this point if they have a mask that they've purchased personally that they feel more comfortable with um, i'm not sure how other districts are handling that but everybody seems to have you know their own favorite mask that they they like to wear so at this point we've been allowing that and we've been cautioning them not to bring in aerosol um, cans to use in the classroom because a, a lot of them want to bring in Lysol sprays, which the aerosol can trigger asthma or different concerns like that. I have a so question, now, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. on masks. If anybody in the audience could chime in, um, what are your thoughts on a logo mask versus a non-logo mask? Because how that contributes to security issues on your campus, especially at a high school level. When, I mean, these are adult kids on campus. If they're in a logoed mask, you know it's your kids, you know it's your students on campus. So um, I'm just wondering what each district is doing with that. And while we wait for people to use the Q&A box, uh, we got another question in terms of I've been flooded with emails from vendors selling PPE. Any guidance on which vendors we can trust that have supplies on hand ready to ship? That's a great question. I think we're all flooded with, I know <laughs> I'm getting hundreds of emails a day and it just mm -hmm. seems impossible to stay on top of them all. So we've been trying to reach out to vendors that we've worked with in the past, or at least vendors that we've heard of that aren't necessarily just coming out of the woodwork. But it's a challenge right now because a lot of our regular vendors might not have the supply that we need readily available. So um, if you can get references or make sure that they take a purchase order and they're not going to be requiring the payment in advance, um, have them send you a, a sample or make sure that you've seen the product before you order it and end up with some kind of quality that you're not happy with. Um, those would be my suggestions. If it says Bubba's PPE, please run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been inundated and I think what's another ironic issue is probably 25% of just the email solicitations I get are from New Jersey and New York. And I'm wondering if people overstocked for that area, thinking they were gonna use a mass amount of supplies on the East Coast, and now they're reaching out to West Coast school districts and clients. I'm Wondering if people were overzealous and over hopeful of selling in that marketplace. Mm -hmm. This is Molly. I just wanted to put in a plug that we have a CASBO buying guide. Right. And please check that out because these are folks who have already done business with California schools so that you have a, a track record with. And while we cannot uh, either promote uh, a particular company or uh, denigrate a particular company, I always think when I'm doing business, I like to look at who I've done business with successfully in the past, who's come through for us, who's delivered. So please check out that CASBO buying guide. And you know, even at CASBO, I probably get four or five emails a day trying to sell me for our small staff. PPE, so I know it just must be magnified out there for all of you. Thank you. Yeah, and so many of our vendors that we trust, they have an open, honest relationship with us and they'll tell us if they can or can't get it. 
And a lot of times they'll have an alternate supplier and they can help you find another reputable source. So another question that's come in is, what formula are you using to determine the amount of hand sanitizer and wipes per student you'll Guess. Um, <laughs> no, we, it kind of depends on the program and the age level. At middle school and high school, we have the challenge of, are they changing classes six times a day, seven times a day? Are we gonna be on a block schedule? I think the unfortunate part of the unknown is still not sure what we're going to do with bringing kids back. You know, and there's the question with the state now on distance learning. So many of us had planned like an every other day situation where half the kids were at school one day and then the next day they were distant learning. But we're not positive that that will be an option for us at this time. So unfortunately, I don't really have an answer or a formula. It just depends on how many times we're switching classes. Another thing that we're looking at as far as middle and high schools is what are some of the same tracks that kids are taking? You know, freshmen and sophomore, there's a lot of requirements with math, English, science, et cetera. And how do we keep some of the same students together as much as possible? And then if it's possible, do we have the teacher change class instead of the student change the class? Because then I'm not disinfecting desks every time. If I have a group of kids that all have math first period, English second period, the English teacher comes on and then they have science third period, the science teacher comes on, then they have history fourth period. I've only had to disinfect the teacher location, not the student location each time. Now, if you, that's not really helping kids social skills when they're with the same group all the time, but we're looking at how we limit the amount of times we need to disinfect and limit the amount of times students come into contact with other students too. How we calculated our uh, initial hand sanitizer order was we looked at how many rooms did we have on campus and anticipating that they would need to use every room on campus, even if that's not normally used for a classroom because of smaller class sizes and needing to use additional spaces. So we went ahead and ordered hand sanitizer dispensers for every room and then we ordered enough sanitizer to fill up every dispenser, at least at the time of the initial install. And then um, with that, you know, we can try to determine how fast they go through it and how often it needs to be refilled once, once we get them in there. But we wanted to just initially at least have a dispenser in every room available. So we just ordered based on the number of rooms on the campus. Genevieve, did you want to add anything? Um, not really. I think uh, that's uh, kind of what we've done as well is we're just trying to make sure we have enough for uh, the initial implementation, even though we don't know exactly what that is. If we have enough uh, for every classroom, then uh, at least we have a starting point and then um, we'll just have to, to see where we are and what August looks like for us before we make a determination on how much we would need to reorder and how frequently we would need to reorder. Thank you. So the next question we got is, thank you for the panel uh, for all the great bullets that you're covering. Can you share some examples of language being used on your signage? Um, are we talking about the social distancing signage? I have I actually have some samples here, so I don't know if you can see. <laughs> <laughs> There's some samples of kind of what we're doing. And um, another thing to consider, I, I, and I don't have samples right now, but we are um, trying to put it in um, Spanish as well. Genevieve, could you read what they say? Yeah. 
So it says, thank you for practicing social distancing. Please stay at least six feet apart. So there's some with like little footprints on them and same thing here. And then we're also gonna be printing out um, arrows so that um, we can show guidance in, in terms of, you know, which direction, which path they should be taking so that we keep everything flowing. Would it be helpful, Sarah, if a couple of us sent our templates to you and we can distribute it with a copy of the PowerPoint? That would be great. And as Tasha had mentioned, all of these webinars are recorded and posted on our CASVA website within 24 hours of the recording. So we'll include all of those as of the hyperlinks. So another question we got is, how are you going to clean the Chromebooks? Thankfully, in our district, uh, we've been one to one for several years. So every student has their own Chromebook. So I think we're going to focus a lot on not just not sharing Chromebooks, not touching each other's Chromebooks and trying to minimize exposure so that they don't need to be cleaned so frequently. Um, other than that, I'm not quite sure what the plan is for cleaning them other than I think they might be using um, rubbing alcohol on, on cotton to clean the keyboards and things like that. We've looked at the same thing as an alcohol-based solution, but trying to need to educate people not to use it on the screen because it could dry out. Yesterday I was in a meeting and they were contemplating having our tech team turn off the touch screen feature that then it's fewer fingerprints and fewer touchings there but i envisioned another kid saying hey help me the touch screen isn't working so there'd be more than one kid touching it i know um we have a lot of our technology team is using gloves when products coming in for them to work on computers but we are looking at the alcohol base because it evaporates quickly. So we started getting some answers to your question regarding the logo um, I'll view, and then we'll transition back to a question. Uh, someone said, stick to your trusted vendors. Uh, yeah. Logo, <laughs> logo mask. Uh, if you provide logo mask to all students, would you then be mandating that they only wear that mask? Seems like a sticky situation either way. I think it comes down to costs when we can get a plain mask for a dollar versus more for a logo mask. Uh, someone requires specific sheets from vendors I have not used before. I think if you do a logo mask and require only those masks, you would need to order more than the standard amount, I'm assuming, to make sure that they're in stock due to the lost or forgotten items. Mm -hmm. So someone stated, I was told today I'm sorry, and as it, it scrolls down, I was told today that there is a study done by the National Center on Biotechnology that some sanitizers are coming in with meth, meth uh, that is potentially lethal. So we need to be careful with what we're purchasing, was the statement. Um, mm -hmm. There's a website called Becker's Hospital. They're more in the medical industry that you could um, sign on to their listserv and get information. And it's really vital right now. And they have a website with a link to several brands of hand sanitizer that um, it's a got methanol product and it could be toxic for use. And so there are different resources to find that. And Leanne will ask that you put that in the uh, resource as well when we send that out. Thank you. Okay. We also got a question about, are the signs being printed with latex printers? Um, for us, we're using a vinyl and then um, doing lamination as well. Yeah, that's another item that's on back order. It's like a vinyl to pre-stick, you peel it back off so you can stick it on your carpet or flooring. 
And I know we printed um, several sets of the signage to go out to our offices and our campuses. And there was one more sign that was needed and it took us a couple weeks longer to get that paper in for our print shop. So while we wait for additional questions to come in, uh, just aha moments that as as we've now entered week 12 of being you know uh socially distancing it's only uh, 12 weeks <laughs> and the year is only halfway <laughs> done and we're done with this year uh or i'm done with this year um any aha moments that you would want to share as you've been discussing meeting planning replanning dumping plans and reassessing that you've come to realize, okay, maybe we need to take this step or con considerations that our viewers would appreciate hearing from you. Um, I will start on one thermometers. When that first came up as a subject in our district, oh my gosh, we have to take every student's, every adult's temperature, every volunteer. And my first thing was, we're gonna have volunteers. So think of that as what you're doing with volunteers coming on campus. But I know um, one of our, you know, our first group of employees that see kids are our bus drivers. And they were concerned about taking temperatures and if a student had a temperature, then what do we do? Well, you let them on the bus because you can't leave them at the bus stop unattended. So it really became a point of what, what was the real need for thermometers? Or if mom knew they had a temperature, here's a couple ibuprofen as you head to the bus stop so they would not have a temperature when it was taken at the bus or when they got to school. So thermometers have been an up and down, back and forth conversation for us. And we still haven't finalized that as a need in our district. Due to so many things, like I said, you're not going to leave a five year old at a bus stop because you think they have a temperature and tell them to walk back home. So that wasn't even an option of not providing service transportation service for kids due to a temperature. You know, an aha moment that I would just uh, share has to do with the fact that. Um, Purchasing people have long been the rule keepers in school districts mm -hmm. where you follow all the guidelines and you have uh, strict uh, timelines that you adhere to, et cetera. So for all of you, you are in such a transition period that it's it's got to be sort of pushing all of your professional buttons at once because we you, there are so many unknowns in this. And I know that I had a, a purchasing person who emailed me earlier in the week and they said they thought that they had entered uh, no person's land that they just they they weren't sure what they were doing their very best but they weren't sure it was the right thing have you guys had that kind of a feeling <laughs> um you kind of feel like is my good not good enough it's like there's always one more thing i need a little bit more quantity of or one more thing to think of and i think we all do amazing jobs, but we're always our worst critics or always think we could do more. So I need to practice what I preach of take a little time to breathe and another 30 to 60 seconds to think through the problem because we always have each other to lean on. We always have CASVO to lean on. We always have great service providers to lean on. And right now, even though we're all pinching pennies and wondering what's going to happen to our budget, giving up service to save a nickel is not going to help any of our kids, our staff, our communities. So really stick to those people you can trust and who've been invested with you all along and all the time and believe in your school district as much as you do is my philosophy. Also, it's a challenge because this is year end for us. This is the time when we're normally trying to wrap up year end and get things closed out. And instead, this year, we're still in this mode of hurry up and buy things and get them here and get all of these extra things done and get these projects done before the kids come out. And I, I think it's 
it's hard being at year end and still being in this mode. But one thing that I've learned is every time I think, oh, you know, we're not going to need that extra precaution in our district, or we're not, you know, necessarily looking at desktop partitions or something, or every time I think maybe that's something we're not going to need, then it comes up to, well, can you research this or can you research that? And it's something new every day. So what I've come to determine is research everything, have all of the answers, try to get all of the information that you can, because somebody's going to ask you for it tomorrow, even though you're not going to be given the details of how many you need or what size or where you're going to put them or what what it's for. Just, you know, I think the purchasing departments are just expected to kind of do all of this research and come up with all of these answers just in case somebody determines that we might need it tomorrow. <laughs> so with that, someone asked, uh, nitro gloves appear to be on back order from an for many of our vendors with ETAs uncertain, is anyone purchasing reusable rubber gloves instead of uh, instead for custodial staff? We actually talked to our custodial team about that yesterday, but they feel that they're harder to work in because they slip off and on and they can't grab it. They wouldn't be able to work tools with them. But um, we're looking at that for maybe restroom cleaning as an alternative. We've historically stocked uh, rubber reusable gloves in our warehouse for custodians, but they don't prefer to wear them. They really don't order them much at all. Um, we've been just starting to go with the vinyl option and, and providing vinyl gloves. We have not looked into reusable rubber gloves. So a question came in regarding the PPE equipment that we're getting from the state of California. Does anyone know of any purchasing vehicles to order additional items from the initial distribution? Great question. I've, I've, I, I've heard that there is a state contract available for additional purchases, but I've called around several different locations around the state and um, DGS and Cal OES and nobody that I've reached out to knows where this contract is or who to ask that question. I'm sitting on the ad hoc uh, supplies meeting, uh, Tasha, Molly, Elizabeth, and I. Uh, we won the lottery of uh, task force meetings this year, and uh, I've been part of the supplies ad hoc committee, which was able to get uh, Cal OES moving on getting the school supplies. And so yesterday we got an update, and we um, but it did not come with the procedures on how LEAs can uh, purchase directly from the Department of General Services, DGS. So I was able to send an email and it includes all of the Cal OES staff that have been working on this issue. Tomorrow I have a call scheduled with the Department of Finance. And so as your advocate, that's really my responsibility to continue to push um, and to create noise in the system that we need to make sure that in order to safely reopen and the first, this first bulk of purchases that we don't know the status is still not enough. The calculations of what they use to determine the allocation by county is not enough and does not account for small school districts, doesn't account for um, the right amount of personnel that we have. And so it's not necessarily accurate in terms of providing sufficient supplies and doesn't take into account J A's, like your CTE programs, your ACES programs, those counts were not included. And so this is something that once we get that procurement process, we will send out a news break to provide that information to all our CASBO members. Sarah, one thing that would be helpful too would be if they have the price associated with that, because it may not be the best negotiated price contract. And while it may be a supplier tip, some of our local suppliers or people we work with may be just as cost competitive. So it would be helpful if we had that information as well. So this is Molly. I just want to reiterate, and obviously Sarah and Tasha do a great job for CASBO and 
And the number of task forces and meetings we're in, I think it's uh, growing exponentially as we speak. The one thing that I think is really important is there are some small school districts who really don't have the kind of purchasing operations that you three ladies represent. And so for them, if the state has something available, they're just wanting to use that because they don't have the ability to do it. So I do think there are an awful lot of districts who are asking the Office of Emergency Services, just find the vendors, get this to us so that we don't have to do it. So I think that will be a little bit of a challenge for those of you that have larger, um, more intact uh, operations going on purchasing wise. I'm also, as I look at the personal protective equipment, and you know, I was an elementary teacher for many years, giving two masks per student and four per, and I can imagine that I had a, I had four students who would have done great with that. I would have had <laughs> other students that ate them, threw them away, drugged them on the floor, uh, made toys out of them and puppets. So it's, as I look at our, the people who created the um, formulas, uh, that elementary has got to be different than junior high, different than high school. And, you know, it's, it's a wide, what we call a swag, right? Uh, <laughs> a guess as to what you need, but whoever came up with that particular one, just, I just laughed when I opened it up. So just two cents about that. Sarah, I think you're muted. We don't hear anything. <laughs> Hello, I got disconnected. Sorry. <laughs> Someone posted a comment. Um, our health officials are telling us that checking the temperature does not really do much. Rather, they're recommending that we have parents do self checks prior to sending their child to that the thermometer isn't taking the core temperature. Uh, someone's aha moment at ACO uh, has been the shift that has organically grown out of um, the shelter in place to take closer to a less paper solution to moving traditional paperwork invoices contracts electronically. So yay. Um, at Caswell, we're saving a lot of paper because I'm not printing either. Uh, someone stated that they're using vinyl gloves. They have been using vinyl gloves for years and their custodians prefer them, but they're struggling to purchase them as well. And, and um, someone has entered into a PPE bid. It is a piggyback, it's a, it's piggybackable. And they had a board award on, and it will be a board awarded on July 14th. And then there's a last update regarding the state contract information and that they're hearing from Cal OES that says that they that the state Cal OES will most likely not have items available to share until the fall. So this is information someone has received and SD USD is now vetting all bidders the equal products that were submitted from their designated branded items. And with that, um, that closes all of the Q&A, and I'm very appreciative to our panel. Uh, all of this information will be posted on our website. Should you have any additional questions, please send us an email. You could contact Tasha Davenport or myself, Sierra Baches, on our email accounts, and we will relay and try to solve and get solutions and get answers as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a good day, Thank everyone. You for having us. Thank, Thank you. you.